Hi guys, thanks for joining me on Making with Marilyn. On today's video, we're going to be making this cute little Halloween sign. It's made out of glitter HTV and a painted canvas. I'm doing things a little bit backwards this time. When I made, when I painted my canvas last night and I cut out my vinyl, I just didn't feel like being seen on camera, so I'm filming my introduction after the fact. But to make this, I used Cricut Design Space. I cut my vinyl out of some vinyl that I order on Amazon.com. Hopefully you can see that. I will show this again later in the video. I used a 10 by 10 canvas frame. Usually I get those at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, but I would say most of the time at Michael's. And I get them in a multi-pack where each one ends up only being about $2. You can all buy also buy certain sizes at the Dollar Tree for a dollar each. That's a great buy. I ended up using this orange paint. Then I wanted to tone it down, so I went with this deep yellow paint. And I still wasn't happy. So then I added in this yellow ochre paint. And then I put some more orange back over the top. And you'll see all those steps in the video. I used just a little foam brush. I let the canvas dry overnight. And then I used a Teflon sheet over the top of it. I used my Easy Press 2. And then because the canvas is hollow or it doesn't have a frame on the back of it, I use these pieces of wood to support the back of it when I put my Easy Press on it. If you had a book, something like that, that would fit inside of it, that would work as well. So let me jump into my video and we'll get started. On today's video, we're just going to do a really quick, fast little project. I think it's going to turn out really cute though. This is a 10 inch by 10 inch canvas. I get these in sets of oh five or six at Michael's, Joann's, where I can, wherever I can find them on sale. And we are going to start with just putting some orange paint on this. This is going to be a Halloween decor or a Halloween decoration. I don't want this super thick and I want it to be fairly light, more like this color down here, but I don't want it to be perfectly even. I like it to have a little bit of, oh, I don't know, mottled or marbled. I just don't want it to be perfectly flat color orange. So we're just going to work this around quickly. Then we can finish the top. Again, I don't want it to look perfect. I want it to have some kind of streakiness to it. Okay, and I'm going to call that good. Before, okay, before I move on to the next step, I decided I wanted to tone down the color of this canvas. And I also didn't show you the paint before. It's just simply acrylic, an inexpensive brand. You can get this at Walmart. And the first color was orange. Now, in the same brand, I have this deep yellow. I want to just tone this down and make it a little bit more pumpkin-y orange as opposed to just a super bright orange. So I'm just going to put a few little streaks of this on. And again, I'll just start rubbing back and forth and we'll see what the color looks like when I get done. Now it's, it's harder to tell on camera exact colors, um, but I do like this color quite a bit better. It's just a more complex, you can see little bits of the orange, you can see little bits of the yellow, and it's just a more complex look. And I like that. Let me hold it up so you can see it a little better. Thank you. 
Now I'm not happy yet with the colors on my canvas, so I'm just going to keep playing until I like what I see. I've added some yellow ochre and then again some more of the deep yellow. I just really want to tone this down from as much orange as is in it right now. Okay, right now this looks hideous, but just wait till the end. Okay, so when I added the yellow, the deep yellow, and the yellow ochre, it looked hideous. But then I added some orange back in, and it's really much more the color that I was looking for. It's a more muted orange. It has some tones, a little bit of tones of brown, maybe even slightly green in it from the yellow ochre. Not really green, but I don't know, mustardy color. It's much more pumpkin-y now. With streaks of color in it, I just like that. That's much better. I can move on now, after that dries. Hi guys, I'm gonna put together a quick project that I'm working on this evening. So I will click New Project. The first thing I want to do is add the number 31. And for my font, I want to use, it's called, it's called American Typewriter. Let me look for it. Yes, American Typewriter. So I'm going to move that up. I am going to be doing my project on a 10 by 10 canvas. I want it to be about, oh, about eight and a half inches. Let's go with eight and a half inches wide. Now I'm gonna unlock it so I can make it about as tall as it is wide. I'm going to move the letters together just a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm going to move the numbers together just a little bit. Okay, so now I have about eight and a half wide and about eight and a half tall, close enough. So I want to upload this spider right here. I'll insert that. That thing's going to be hanging from the one. I'll put it here. And then I'm just going to use a square. Move it over here, get it kind of out of the way. And I'm going to change it into a line. I'm sure there's an easier way to do that. I don't know what it is, so this is what I do. If you could tell me what it is, that would be awesome. So I'll have it hanging down to the spider. And I think my spider needs to turn a little bit. 
There we go. I like that. And then I also want to bring in this little spider whip. It's going to be coming in from the top right corner. So I arrange it the way I need it to be. Now let me move my numbers to about where they would be on my canvas, about right there. So then my spider web is going to be about right there. And now I need to move my little, whoops, need to move my little line over. I can get the line. There we go. Let's move it up first. Doesn't want to cooperate otherwise. That looks fine. Move my spider web back over. I'm going to make my spider web a tiny bit bigger. Okay, that looks fine. Now the last thing I want to do is add the word October. And I want that to be American type also, so that's fine. That's what it is. I'm going to decrease the line spacing just a little bit. And then I want to make it quite a bit smaller. The October needs to be curved, and I don't know if you've seen this feature, it's pretty neat. So you click on this curve, and I want it to curve downward, so you move your little slider downward. If you wanted it to curve the other way, you move it that way. But I want it to curve downward. I want my letters to be a little smaller. And then I also want my letters to kind of creep up the end. Whoops, go back. I want my letters to kind of creep up on the inside of the three. So I'm going to angle a little more. See if I can find it. There we go. Move that over here closer to the curve of the three. And I like that. So now I want to weld that, but before I do, just to be cautious in case I change my mind on anything, I like to highlight the whole thing, duplicate, and now I'm just gonna hide everything that I just duplicated. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and highlight everything. Well, let me show you what would happen if I didn't do this next step. If I did not weld everything together and I just click make it, you see the cuts are all over this sheet. Matter of fact, my little line going down to my spider was gray, so it wouldn't even cut on the same mat. And my spider web wouldn't cut on the same mat. The 31, the spider, and the October would be all spaced out. So I want to cancel that cut. I want to highlight everything. Now, if I just clicked attached, everything would cut in the same place, but you would have cut lines around the one, between the one and the spider web, between the line coming down and the spider web, between the spider and the line. You don't want that. So we're going to weld it all together so it cuts as one layer, one single cut. So now we click on Make It. It's all together, and that's just going to cut as one layer without cut lines in between everything. So I'm going to click Continue.
Now I'm going to cut this out of heat transfer vinyl. Hopefully I don't regret this. I have not done this type of project before, but I'm going to do it on heat transfer vinyl. So I'm going to click this everyday iron on. I also need to mirror my image since I'm using heat transfer vinyl. Okay, so I am ready to load my material. Let me get my camera changed and I'll be back and show you that. Now I have some fairly inexpensive glitter iron-on vinyl that I purchased off of, off of Amazon and it's black so I thought that would be pretty cute for a Halloween decoration to have it be glittery. So I'm going to use it. Um, also I was showing the other day how I'm putting little labels on that tells the name, where I got it, what it is, how long you preheat, what temperature you use, how long you press it for, and then whether it's hot, warm, or cold peel. And I like using that. That way you don't have to look it up each time. Now with heat transfer vinyl, you have a carrier sheet or a transfer sheet, and it's the shinier side. So you put the shiny side down because you don't want to cut through the shiny side. That's what's going to hold your heat transfer vinyl together so that you can adhere it to whatever you are heat pressing it to. Now when I sent this or when I told my computer what to cut it out of, I had used the setting everyday iron on. So I need to change that. I don't know how well the screen is going to show, but it says material that I'm set to is everyday iron on right here where I'm moving my cursor around. I can click on that and I can click browse materials. And now I'm just going to type the word glitter and glitter iron on is a, a choice. So I've selected it. I click done. It wants me to use my fine point blade, which I have in my clamp. I like to check it just to make sure that there's nothing on it. So we are now ready to send our material. Okay, so we're ready to unload this. Now I'm going to cut right below my cut line so I waste as little vinyl as possible. I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but you can already kind of see the design through this. But let me go ahead and weed it. Also, the speckles or the sparkles or the glitters, whatever you want to call it in this, they're kind of a bluish color. That's actually kind of pretty. So I'm just going to grab one corner and start pulling up. Oops, I poked all the way through. There we go.
Okay, I think I have it all weeded. There's the design. Now let me get back to my canvas. I'll reset the camera and we'll get started on adhering this to the canvas. I let my canvas dry overnight and I have my black glitter box here that I've put this label on. It tells me to preheat it, which I don't think I'm going to do. In, well, maybe I will. Preheat it two to three seconds. That's more for fabric, but I'll do it. And then press it at 305 for 10 to 15 seconds, and it's a cold peel. I have these little pieces of wood here that I'm going to uh, lift the canvas up off the table with so that I can get pressure on the inside. Uh, I think that what might happen is the outside is a frame and it would be tight there. And if this is sagging at all, it wouldn't be tight. So I have these just for some extra help. Now my Easy Press 2 is preheated to 305 for 10 seconds. So I'm gonna move that and get my actual artwork centered up here. For now, I'm going to start with the support over in the corner. Okay, here is my design. I just want this fairly centered. I think that looks pretty good, looks pretty straight. Now I have the carrier sheet on here, so typically you wouldn't necessarily need a sheet of Teflon or a Teflon sheet, but in this case, I've never pressed onto painted canvas. Usually when I'm doing a canvas, I use a stencil and a paint on it. So this is a new thing for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a Teflon sheet just in case the paint would scorch or get onto my Easy Press. I assume it might get onto my Easy Press and mess it up. Okay, so I'm gonna let that cool, and then I will be back to show you when I take the transfer sheet off. Okay, I think that's cooled off enough. So let's go ahead and try to take this carrier sheet off. Okay, that looks gorgeous. I could tell when I lifted it that this part right here wasn't quite adhered down well enough. If my large easy press won't do the trick, I'll get my mini out, but I think this will probably... Well, I think this will be fine. I... Let's see. Oh yeah, that's great. Okay, so here is my final product. I have a little bit of stuff to clean off, but it looks gorgeous. I like the glitter on it. That's pretty. I like that the glitter even has kind of a bluish element in it. So I'll hang that up in my house somewhere. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. 
If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comments section. And if you'd like to see what I'll be working on in the future, hit the subscribe button. If you want to receive notifications when I post a new video, hit the bell and you should be notified. Thanks again. I'm Marilyn. Bye-bye.